Ladles and Jelly Spoons, welcome back to Badger Works. Today, something you've been asking for. Uh, I'm going to cover something today that I get asked about all the time. And the reason I'm going to cover it now is a very simple one. Uh, one of the things I get asked the most is what tools do I need to buy to build models? And this morning I was contacted by one of my patrons uh, who also happens to be a very, very dear friend of mine. And um, But thank you for your support, by the way. In fact, thank you to all of my lovely patrons for your support. It's much appreciated. Uh, but she contacted me this morning and said, I'm going to go and buy a model and build it. And what do I need to buy? So that's what we're going to look at. <laughs> what models, what tools do you need to build a model? So let's get on with it. So to start with, uh, I think we need to cover the holy trinity of uh, tools, as it were. The three tools that you will use the absolute most. And the most important tool of all is this. The knife. Uh, the knife is the tool that you will use by far, hands down, the most when modeling. Um, it's really the one tool you simply cannot do without. Okay, you cannot build a model without a knife. And before I start talking about this particular knife and knives in general, it's worth remembering that as with any kind of tool, uh, you get what you pay for. And it's a false economy to buy cheap tools. I know we've talked about how to save money when modeling and things like that in the past, but this is not that. This is about what do I need to actually do the job properly. And to start with, you need a decent knife. So for example, you can get knives like this. Um, this is uh, just a cheap like hobby knife. Uh, I bought this, it came in a blister pack. There was about 10 of them that I think I bought for a pound from a, a, a tool market. And it's a knife, it'll cut, it's okay, but it's not, it's not the best thing for modeling. Um, but if it's the only knife you have, then it's better than nothing. Now, this knife here is a, well, it's not even really a knife, it's a scalpel. Uh, this is a Swan Morton uh, number three handle with a Swan Morton uh, number 11 blade on it. And the reason I use this one in particular, uh, or a couple of reasons, uh, it's stainless steel, so it won't rust. Um, the blades are very easy to get hold of. Uh, I have got boxes and boxes of blades for these. Um, and these blades, these Swan Morton blades, I mean, they are scalpel blades. They are ludicrously sharp. And it's actually safer to use a sharp blade than a blunt one. Because if you try and cut something with a blunt blade, you have to put a lot more force on it to get it to cut, which means you're much more likely to slip and much more likely to cut yourself. So get a decent knife. The other thing with this one is because of the shape of the handle, it's easier to control in your hand. And also when you put it down, it stays where you put it. It doesn't roll away. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the knife that's the most the most important tool so that's that the next thing cutters decent pair of cutters uh, these ones are uh, Zuron branded uh, made in the USA uh, and you need cutters to get things well to cut things basically to get things off of frames uh, to clean bits up things like that and again this is a similar thing to the knife the sharper the better because when you cut through when you cut a piece off a frame what you want to do is cut the plastic not crush it and so sharp cutters will really help you with that um, these are not massively expensive uh, you can get really really good ones uh, like for example the Tamiya pointed side cutters are absolutely staggering but they're also very very expensive so these are a good um, compromise so cutters and the last thing, tweezers. You will need a pair of tweezers or it will certainly make your life a whole lot easier. Um, 
these tweezers, these are the ones you've seen these probably in every video, certainly all the modeling ones, you've seen this particular pair of tweezers. These came as part of a set. Uh, there's all kinds of different ones, uh, like those ones, and uh, these, and these. So again, it, it was a set. But these are the ones I use the most because the, the bent end means it's easier to see what you're doing when you're using them. But the main thing to remember with these is they have a coating on the tip that makes them so that nothing sticks to them and they are also uh, non-static. So uh, again, nothing will stick to them. So decent pair of tweezers. So those are the three things that you need above all else. A decent knife, a decent pair of tweezers, and a decent pair of cutters. If you get nothing else, get those things. And that will do you for 90% of what you're gonna do. So, when you go out and think, I wanna build a model and I need stuff, these three things, top of the list. Now we'll look at some other bits as well. Uh, scissors, also important. Um, these ones are uh, they say titanium, they're actually branded titanium, uh, but they are titanium scissors. Um, and these are good for cutting, masking tape and things like that. I've also got some more specialized ones like these ones. These are my Calmore uh, fly tying uh, scissors that I use for fairly specialized applications. I mean, this is more for um, like when I'm doing rigging and stuff like that. These ones, the blades actually have micro serrations on them and they're designed to grip as they cut. So if you're cutting something uh, like fishing wire or fishing line, which is plastic and round and quite tough, um, this will actually grip it as it cuts and stops it pinging out the end of the blades. So not really good for everyday use, but certainly for more specialized use. But yes, just a, a pair of a decent pair of scissors. Um, and obviously, you know, a bigger pair as well, just for cutting boxes open and stuff like that. Um, what else? Uh, next, also useful, masking tape. Uh, this is Vibac tape. This is um, designed for like painters and decorators and uh, you know body shops and things like that. But it's also good for modeling. Uh, when you're getting masking tape, get the make sure it's acid free because um, some of them have like acids in the uh, adhesive. Most nowadays don't, but it's always worth checking. But this is uh, one inch tape, but there's also other, lots of other ones you can get, obviously. Uh, like for example, there's a few that I have. Um, that's Tamiya tape, that's uh, 18 mil, three quarter inch. Uh, that's uh, an unbranded tape, but I use this a lot, it's very good. That's uh, one mil, uh, that's six mil, or quarter of an inch. That's three mil, or eighth of an inch. And this is another Tamiya one, this is 10 mil. So obviously what you can do is get these ones and just cut it to the size you want, but sometimes it's easier just to be able to grab something like that and use it. Uh, I've also got, that's um, I think 0.5 millimeter. <laughs> it's really, really thin stuff, but it's great for doing like pinstriping and stuff. So anyway, um, so yes, masking tape is always useful. I mean, obviously masking tape is more for when you're doing spraying and things, but it's still useful. Cotton buds. Cotton buds are useful. Q-tips for those of you in the colonies. Um, this is a box of 600, and these actually have plastic stems, which are, well, you can't get them anymore. It's as simple as that. Um, these are absolutely golden. You'll go through so many of these. Um, obviously, nowadays, they're all paper-stemmed ones. I bought, when they stopped selling these, I went into a supermarket and I bought, I think, 20 boxes of these uh, in addition to the ones I already had. So I've probably got somewhere in the region of 15,000 cotton buds. <laughs> so that should keep me going for a little while. But cotton buds, always very useful for all kinds of different things. Uh, what else? Cocktail sticks, always very handy for all manner of things. Um, you need to be able to hold things when you're painting them. And what I generally do, and I'll just show you this little box that I have here, and you will see that I have got some little electrical 
connectors uh, or clamps and I have put them on the end of cocktail sticks and that way I can get something and I can hold it and I can paint it you see and also more importantly when I'm done painting it I can put it down without actually putting it down and to do that I have a number of blocks like this uh, this is it's literally just a scrap of wood with some holes drilled in it and then I just put a red dot on it because my eyes are terrible and I couldn't see the holes um, <laughs> story of my life stop laughing at the back um, but again you can basically arrange all your parts put them like that you can take them out you can paint them and then you can put them back again and it keeps them safe and keeps them organized so that's always very handy but if you don't have things like this then you can just use a cocktail stick like here um, I've got a load of cocktail sticks that just have a bit of blue tack or white tack stuck to the end and it's the same thing you can just stick something to it and paint it so very handy uh, what else okay so I should probably say as well I'm not going to cover airbrushing in this video this is um, like a real kind of basics thing so I'm not going to cover airbrushes uh, so we're talking more about brush painting here um, so you'll need a decent set of brushes um, there are all kinds of brushes you can get these are a couple of sets that I got from uh, the works and these brushes are perfectly good uh, I use brushes like this a lot uh, there's also more expensive ones these are a couple of uh, pro art sets that I have for detail work um, and these go from a zero down to I think a, a, a 10 or size so they're a little bit more expensive but they are much higher quality and they're very good for very fine detail work um, so brushes I apologize for this being slightly random but uh, I've kind of taken a break from doing other things to, to do this video. <laughs> um, paint. Paint is important. Um, what paint should you use? That's a very good question. Uh, I would recommend acrylics to start with, basically because they're easier to use, they're easier to clean up, uh, and they're less noxious. Um, I tend to use Tamiya paints more than anything, so for example, these little pots, you've seen many of these. Um, and the trouble is with it is it's like, what colors do you get? I mean, where do you start? Black and white, obviously. Primary colors are always good. Um, it really depends on what you're doing. What I would recommend is if you're going to buy a specific model, uh, buy the paints for that model uh, and get black and white as well. Um, it's something you can you can build up as you go you don't need to go out and buy hundreds and hundreds of pots of paint straight off the bat you really don't um, I mean having said that I do have hundreds and hundreds of pots of paint but I've been collecting them for many many years um, but yeah for brush painting Tamiya is possibly not the best but I generally find that Tamiya is the most forgiving brand um, for certainly for airbrushing so if, you, if you're going to be looking to get into airbrushing in the future you might want to consider this now they're not sponsors or anything it's just this is my own personal experience but there's other ones you can get um, obviously there are all kinds of other brands there's Vallejo, Mig and everybody else uh, it's really again it comes down to what you can get hold of in some cases but uh, yeah I would I would certainly look at Tamiya as a good place to start uh, palettes these are always useful um, this is a set that came from the works, but you can get these in like any any craft or hobby shop. Um, and they're useful for mixing paint in, uh, thinning paint. You can also use something like this. This is a wet palette that I made. Um, you can buy these, but I made this one. This is just a little plastic box that I 3D printed. And it has a piece of baking parchment on the top. And then underneath that is a piece of uh, tissue paper, kitchen paper. And basically you wet the paper, uh, the paper will just dampen the parchment and you can put your paint on it and it won't dry out. So that's handy. Um, these are all good for acrylics, but you can't use them for solvent based paints. Um, but 
you can use these for solvent based paints these are um, uh, cake tins little aluminium foil cake tins and these are great if you're doing anything with um, oil based paints or lacquers or anything like that that has a, a thinner um, like an enamel thinner or a, you know a lacquer thinner or anything like that because it won't eat through it uh, this is a pack of 50 this came from the pound shop always handy and when you're done with them you can just fold them up and put them in the recycling glue glue is important uh, there are all kinds of different types of glues you can get the ones that I would recommend Revel contact a professional it's a very good one it has a a nice little fine applicator nozzle on it that's very good um, but the one I would recommend the most is this Tamiya extra thin cement quick setting there are actually two versions of this uh, there's also uh, a, a non quick setting version <laughs> um, but these are absolute game changers because uh, basically the way they work is uh, it's basically a solvent it's an industrial solvent and what happens is you put the two pieces together you touch this to the joint and it will wick into the joint and weld it together with a glue like this now this is a very good glue and it, there are certainly applications where this is actually better than this um, but with this you actually need to apply the glue and then put the pieces together which can sometimes be tricky but these are the ones I would recommend um, I actually tend to use an industrial solvent uh, that's what's actually in here um, called uh, MEK methyl ethyl ketone but honestly I wouldn't recommend that for like most people because it's really 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 nasty stuff and you don't want to breathe it in and you don't want to get it on your hands and it's just this this is a much better option <laughs> um, so that's glue safety let's talk safety um, these are a good investment <laughs> rubber gloves um, of course they're not rubber anymore they're uh, these ones are nitrile um, you can get latex gloves I don't like using latex gloves because latex can react to certain chemicals and also some people are allergic to it so I use these ones these are nitrile and uh, they work very well and you can use them for a number of things firstly they keep your hands clean let me demonstrate this <laughs> this is the glove that I was using on the, the recent um, uh, Swift racing car build and you can see that there is paint all over it of various colors and primarily British racing green but that would have been all over my hands and while most of these paints are not necessarily toxic you don't really want to get it on your hands but there's also another thing and that is you want to not only keep stuff off your hands but keep your hands off of the model uh, your fingers are greasy they may not feel it, but they are. Even if you've got the driest skin in the world, your skin still produces oil. And if you put your fingers all over your model, then you are basically smearing grease all over it, which obviously doesn't help paint stick. So you, these gloves will not only protect your hands, they will protect your model from you. So they're very useful. Uh, a respirator, very good idea, uh, especially if you're using any kind of propellant. Uh, so if you're using an airbrush or using rattle cans or anything like that get a respirator this is a 3m1 um, this is a very good one the model is 42510 uh, and I really need to replace this one actually because the um, the filters are getting a bit clogged up uh, but this is very very handy because again a lot of these things are non-toxic but you really don't want to be breathing them in uh, the only thing that should be going into your lungs is air basically so yes these very handy safety glasses as well also important um, perhaps not so much when you're modeling but it's very easy to clip something off of a model and it go pinging off and hit you in the eye so you know you might also need magnifiers or something if your eyes are as bad as mine um, you can buy these like really expensive magnifiers I just use these these are um, the cheap reading glasses from the pound shop <laughs> uh, but they also work again a bit of eye protection sanding materials another important thing um, there are various things you can use for sanding one of the most simple things and certainly to get you started are these um, these are uh, nail sticks like you know manicure sticks 
um, and you can often get these in packs that have a variety of different sizes and grits so they're always handy um, I have other all kinds of different abrasives I do metal work would work all kinds of different things so I've got lots of different abrasives uh, but these are, I use a lot uh, this is uh, wet and dry paper um, this is good stuff this is comes from Germany um, I think this one's feels like about 2000 grit uh, but this is great for polishing um, so that's good and again if you're going to get wet and dry paper get the latex backed stuff don't get because ironically some wet and dry papers are actually paper backed and you get them wet and the paper falls apart these are latex backed much better um, and obviously you can get sanding sticks and standing sponges and things like that but just to get you started these will be absolutely perfect And uh, here is our, not well, not really finished article, but hopefully this will uh, point you in the right direction. So just to reiterate, we've got our most important things, which is the knife, the cutters, and the tweezers. Uh, glue, scissors, brushes. Um, we've got something to sand with. We've got some pallets for mixing paint here and on the other side. Uh, we've got our cotton buds, we've got our cocktail sticks, and we've got our protective equipment. Uh, oh, and masking tape, obviously. So, um, yeah, hopefully that will at least point you in the right direction to get you started. These are things that I will use guaranteed on every single build, uh, especially when brush painting. So, um, yeah, hopefully that will give you a little bit of a, a pointer. And um, thank you once again to the uh, for the support of all my patrons. Um, as I say, this, this video was a direct <laughs> response to a question from a patron, and uh, their support is always much appreciated, so it's the least I could do. And uh, I'll see you on the next one. Cheers. Bye.